Well, we're just skipping over to the pond here. We got some fish food. So we're gonna hit the fish right now. And I'm also gonna throw a thermometer in the water. The water temperatures are getting pretty darn warm. So there's obviously a bit of a concern. Trout like cold water, it gets too warm, they start to suffer. So we're gonna test right now to see if they'll feed. You can see the water clarity has actually improved a little bit. We've had some cool evenings, which is really good. Let's toss a, toss a bit of feed in here and see what happens. If they come up and feed, it means they're in good shape. If they don't come up and feed, it means they're suffering. Well, that's not good at all, is it? I'm a little concerned. None of the fish came up. It doesn't mean they're not feeding, it just means that they might be stuck down at the bottom where the cooler water is. So we'll test the surface water here, just throw the thermometer in. And it's not gonna tell us what the temperature is at the bottom of the pond, but it's gonna give a pretty good guesstimate. Uh, the difference between top and bottom of this particular pond might be only two, two degrees. And if the water temperature gets above 26 degrees in total, those fish are completely toast. They're done. Not only that, but the water level has dropped about three feet. So this is gonna be something that we're gonna to have to pay very, very, very careful attention to over the next few, next few weeks. If we can get over the next two or three weeks, I think we have a fighting chance of our fish surviving through, but uh, it's really not looking good. All right, let's have a check, see where we're at. Just gonna do it without taking it out of the water. That reads 20, I'd say 25 degrees. Celsius. So at 25 degrees Celsius, a couple days ago I had measured the temperature at 26 at the surface. 26 Celsius, that's like critical. Uh, it gets any higher than that, that's it, the fish are done. Well, I can actually see a couple of trout swimming through here, that's good news. Saw three come by. Okay, well that gives me some hope. They might have come through the little channel here. Looking for the feed over here in this section. So those birds have come a long way, a long, long way. You guys remember way back when I showed them just those little chicks. They've obviously graduated to the chicken tractor. The mark comes in here, feeds them every day, waters them every day, and they also has to move it every day so that they can get to some fresh grass. You uh, look around the other side, it's already been completely taken over. So they, what they do is they feed off of all the grass down here. If you look all the way over my shoulder here, of all the different moves. So every day he moves it up the length of the tractor and they'll eat all the grass here and then they'll obviously leave their waste and that will fertilize the ground. So this is actually a really great way to make a garden. You can actually pull forward, they'll eat compost and turn all this green matter so how much feed are they going through every day? Uh, 125 kilogram bag. So like 50 pounds of feed every day? Yeah, because they're big like this, but I mean, also 50% of their diet is grass. Like they love this clover. And if you get a dandelion in there, they'll fight over it. There must be a conditioned stimulus for those. As soon as you start cranking it up, they all start to get really, really excited. I know they're getting fresh greens. You got a lazy one. Let's go. Lazy ones at the back don't want to move. They're gonna get gonna get run over by the whole thing. Going the other way. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Leave it, Max. Off. <laughs> How much life do these guys have left? One day. Tomorrow morning they go to the butcher. I'll let the other half go for an additional two weeks and get bigger, and then I'll send those in for butcher. But I'll have them break down from whole chickens to pieces. 
Birds can't get any much bigger than this. There's, I mean, they're bred to grow fast. At this point in time, if you just left them and tried to keep them as a pet, it wouldn't be able to walk anymore and it would eventually suffer a heart attack. They're just genetically bred to put on so much weight, they can't even physically walk anymore. And what the consumer demands is a lot of breast meat, not a lot of leg meat, because leg meat's chewy. Uh, so the, you know, the breast gets real big. It gets so big that they can't even carry the weight because their wings are so small. It's a really a kind of a weird thing, but I mean, they're not suffering right now. If they go any longer than that, they do start to suffer because they can't physically pick themselves up anymore. You guys think we should do another pigeon hunt? They've got a pigeon issue here too. <laughs> Something I've been thinking about for a long while, whether we should get uh, get going on pigeons. There's another, you can see two pigeons right now on the roof. There's always some flying around here. Just need something to shoot them with. They don't have a, they don't have an air gun. I've been working on one for a little bit. But that'd be something to do. There's lots of goats here too. There's, uh, the little goats are here. And uh, when they get a little bit bigger, they move over to the milk barn there. Hey guys, just out here at the pond now. Uh, I got some good news and some bad news. It's been a couple of days since I was here last. The good news is that almost 100% of the algae has cleared up. That's awesome. I think it's probably a combination of us raking the stuff off the top and the aerator. The dugoutdo.ca provide us with a solar aerator. That's a couple episodes ago. You should go back and check that out. It's been a huge, huge, huge help. Check this pond out. Look how clear that is now. As I told you guys before, I had a plan this year to expand my knowledge base and try different things and new things, which I always, always encourage you guys to do too. So I've never speared a, well, I have speared a fish before on a homemade forged spear, which you've seen, of course, you guys saw that too, right? But now I'm gonna try to actually use a, a modern man-made spear and actually do it underwater snorkeling, which is something I've never done. So we're just gonna load this up, go for a swim, and then release it, hopefully into a fish. <laughs> you guys have any confidence in me? I don't know. This is a lot of stuff to take care of. Let's give it a go. My bald head 100% needs some sunscreen because last time I went out, I freaking burnt the whole top of my head and it hurt so bad because obviously I never tan the top of my head. It just burns all the time. It's either burnt or cold. That's the really sad part about losing your hair. And don't laugh because you guys might lose your hair too. So we're gonna get protected here. So at least I don't have to deal with a whole pile of pain when I'm done. Clark spent, didn't make it. And uh, I picked a couple names that you guys suggested based on the Superman theme. So, you guys keyed in on that? That was good. So we, got, we got one that's really good. I didn't have to change at all. The second one I had to change because uh, they're both females. So you can't have a, well you could have a male name, but I didn't want to have a male name. So, the first name as suggested, someone came up with Lois. You know, Lois and Clark. Lois is the female character. Man, you guys should know that. Lois Laying. Female, Lois Lang. So instead of Lois Lane, Lois Lang, that's the other female. That's one female. Okay, so we got Clark Spent, dead, deceased. <laughs> we got Lois Lang, okay. And the next one was, somebody mentioned um, Lex, as in Lex Luthor. That's a male name, right? You know the character Lex Luthor, the nemesis to Superman. So I figured, let's just change it a slight bit. Let's call, us, call the other female Lexi. Luther. <laughs> so you got Lexi Luther, Lois Lang, and rest in peace, Clark Spent. How do you guys like those? So I'm targeting today is actually those two big females, <laughs> if I could get them. Um, but I'll take anything. I'll even take a bass because uh, my spear fishing skills are probably, well, they're zero right now. So I'm at that low end of the steep learning curve. So let's see what I can do. Lois Lang, Lexi, Luther and Clark Spent. Rest in peace.
Really? Not one fish came to that feed. They all took off because you're there. All right, good. Oh, here they come. Now they're coming. They're right at and right in front of you. Okay, geez, shut up. All right, good. Right here. Oh, they're feeding. They're feeding right below you. So hard to get. Uh, there's some to your left now. <laughs> They're just kind of circling you now. They go when you every time you turn, they just move around you and then go back to getting the feed. <laughs> huh. Water cold? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't see them. I think visibility is better out of the water than in it. Like I can only see maybe two, three feet in front of me. Yeah. So bow fishing. Well, that was uh, Mark from Growing Up Gowdy. He's got a channel too, you can check him out. But uh, came by just the right time, throw some feed in there, see if we could <laughs> spear I can't see them. I'm sure you guys can't see them on here. So until this water clears up, Mark said that it was uh, really clear, but it rained a whole pile last night, so it might have silted it up again. But uh, I think unless I can see right to the bottom from shore, there's not really much point in fishing like this. But uh, I've got some bow fishing equipment sling bow, bow fishing, the whole works. So that's gonna be next. Maybe we'll tie a fly. Maybe we'll tie a fly um, that resembles a pellet feed. Somebody mentioned that, I think that's a really good idea. It's way too murky still. I think it's probably got, well, a little bit's the algae, a little bit's the fact that it rained like crazy last night. So it's not my style to give up. I'm not giving up with the spear, I'm gonna try it again. Even if the water gets super cold, even if it's so freaking cold, I can't really tolerate it. I'm still gonna come back and try again. I'm gonna do this until I get it right. I wanna give a quick shout out to the dugout dude. He supplied the solar panel uh, aeration pump. And you guys saw how well it worked when I was snorkeling down in the pond. Things setting up a steady, steady stream of oxygen. Anytime the sun's out, this thing's running. It's very simple. So dugoutdude.ca, link will be down in the description. Great sponsor of this channel. This thing works awesome, highly recommended.